When I say that I was a feminist in kindergarten, even before the concept was known in my family, I am not exaggerating. I was born in 1942, so we are talking remote antiquity. I believe that the situation of my mother, Panchita, triggered my rebellion against male authority. Her husband abandoned her in Peru with two toddlers in diapers and a newborn baby. Panchita was forced to return to her parents' home in Chile, where I spent the first years of my childhood. My grandparents' house in Santiago, in the Providencia neighborhood, then a residential district and now a labyrinth of offices and shops, was large and ugly, a monstrosity of cement, with high ceilings, drafts, walls darkened by kerosene heater soot, heavy red plush curtains, Spanish furniture made to last a century, horrendous portraits of dead relatives, and piles of dusty books. The front of the house was stately. Someone had tried to give the living room, the library, and the dining room an elegant varnish, but they were seldom used. The rest of the house was the messy kingdom of my grandmother, the children, my brothers and me, the maids, and two or three dogs of no discernible breed. There was also a family of semi-wild cats that reproduced uncontrollably behind the refrigerator. The cook would drown the kittens in a pail on the patio. All joy and light disappeared from the house after my grandmother's premature death. I remember my childhood as a time of fear and darkness. What did I fear? That my mother would die and we would be sent to an orphanage. That I would be kidnapped by pirates. That the devil would appear in the mirrors. Well, you get the idea. I am grateful to that unhappy childhood because it provided ample material for my writing. I don't know how novelists with happy childhoods in normal homes manage. Early on, I realized that my mother was at a disadvantage compared to the men in her family. She had married against her parents' wishes, and the relationship had failed, just as she had been warned it would. She'd had to annul her marriage, which was the only way out in that country, as divorce was not legalized until 2004. Panchita was not trained to work. She had no money or freedom, and she was the target of gossip. Not only was she separated from her husband, but she was also young, beautiful, and coquettish. My anger against machismo started in those childhood years of seeing my mother and the housemaids as victims. They were subordinate and had no resources or voice. My mother because she had challenged convention, and the maids because they were poor. Of course, back then, I didn't understand any of this. I was only able to do so in my 50s after spending some time in therapy. However, even if I couldn't reason, my feelings of frustration were so powerful that they marked me forever. I became obsessed with justice and developed a visceral reaction to male chauvinism. This resentment was an aberration in my family, which considered itself intellectual and modern, but according to today's standards, was frankly paleolithic. Panchita consulted several doctors trying to find out what was wrong with me. Maybe her daughter suffered from colic or a tapeworm. An obstinate and defiant character was accepted in my brothers as an essential condition of masculinity. But in me, it could only be pathological. Isn't it always thus? Girls are denied the right to be angry and to thrash about. We had some psychologists in Chile, maybe even child psychologists, but in a time dominated by taboos, they were the last resource for the incurably mad. In my family, our lunatics were endured in private. <laughs>